Mike, do you still train conjugate or have you switched it up and why? Um, so when I first went to, I guess when I first got into powerlifting on my own, uh, I found some books, um, programs and articles by Ed Cohn and started following some programs like that. Um, some older, old school guys and, um, you know, it was more block periodized. So there was just kind of a block of preparatory where you're almost not doing barbell stuff. You're doing rows and lunges and uh, dumbbell press and things like that. And then it moved you into a kind of a hypertrophy phase with squat bench dead, uh, overhead, some dumbbell work, and then moved into kind of a strength phase with squat bench dead, overhead, etc. Uh, and I made pretty good progress to start out with, uh, probably within the first two, two or three years of training, I squatted around 400, um, bench probably 305 or so, and deadlifted around 500. Terrible form, but I did it. From there, I kind of did more and more research. I ran some 531, which is kind of a similar type deal, uh, although it's not block periodized, it's a similar thought process. Um, and then I found in some of the Russian stuff, some of the Boroshenko stuff, and uh, I responded really, really well to kind of the higher volume, higher frequency training, a little bit more specific with some slight variations sprinkled in. Um, brought my squat up to around 505. I benched uh, 335, 315, and I deadlifted around 550. Um, from there is when I joined Super Training Gym, and Super Training at the time was all geared powerlifting, and they were led by Mark Bell, obviously, and Mark Bell um, got kind of his real jump into powerlifting, although he'd been doing it a long time. He was a follower of Louis Simmons, and he was a Westside Barbell member himself, uh, so they did train Westside Conjugate, and uh, went in Rome, right? So I didn't want to go in there uh, like I knew anything, because in the spectrum, I still know nothing, but... Um, even though I kind of had a, a good feel of what works for me over here, I wanted to learn more and I wanted to learn from the best. So that's why I went there. And um, so I did train conjugate for maybe a year or two. Uh, and what I found for me being the only raw lifter there is that um, I got a lot of posterior development, which was great. My hamstrings, glutes, and low back got very strong. Um, my deadlift did increase quite a bit. I pulled 600 uh, training under a conjugate method, uh, but my squat and, and bench, um, because of the um, exercise or too broad of an exercise variation, they didn't progress as how I'd like. So uh, for Westside Conjugate, for you guys that don't know, there's two upper body days a week, two lower body days a week. And basically what you're doing is on one upper body and one lower body day a week, you're going up to a max effort single. That means a grindy hard single. And that's with an exercise variation, bands, chains, different barbell, different grip, uh, often using a box in the squat, um, different boards, different methods like that. <clears throat> Uh, and then the other day a week is, is a little bit more of a, a dynamic day, or it is a dynamic day. It's a little bit more of that Russian style where you're doing uh, anywhere from eight to 12 um, sets of one, two or three reps in the squat bench or deadlift. And you're using maybe 60, 70% with some bands and chains and you're moving them very quickly, uh, working on your form and, and, and fitness. Uh, and afterwards is when you get all of your hypertrophy work done. You're doing tons and tons of accessories. Westside is based around um, finding your weakness in a lift, basing your exercise variation, your main day lift off that, and then also basing all of the rest of it. So if you have a lot of tricep issues or lockout issues, you're slamming tricep skull crushers and push downs for an hour after your main work. Um, and although I put on some good muscle and I made some um, progress there, it took me back once I started to get frustrated with my plateaus to a more high volume, high frequency uh, training method, more of a sub maximal that I've been doing now for um, maybe four years. And previous to that, that super training uh, block, I started doing it super training. I started coaching people that method. Uh, I worked with Jeremy Hamilton one on one. He prepped me for a meet uh, using a similar method. And so basically majority of my training is now between 50 and 60, excuse me, 50 and about 70, 75% of my one rep max. I'm doing a lot of um, kind of daily undulating, which means that within a week, uh, I'll train you know, eight to 12 reps. I'll also train, you know, three to uh, eight reps and also train one to three reps. I'm training all rep ranges to maintain my fitness in all of them. And also each rep range, each load you put on your body will cause a different stimulus to that muscle. And you'll be able to um, perhaps gain more muscle that way because the muscles that fire under a 12 rep set is different than the muscles that fire under a heavy or a light two rep set. I'm a big fan of compensatory acceleration. This basically means um, once your form is locked in and you're warmed up, we're using that 50 to 75% range and we're putting everything into the bar. Even though I may be benching 315 for triples, uh, I'm gonna push into 315 like it's 450 and I'm gonna hit it as hard as I can. And that's the same with the squat bench and dead after my form is locked in. So once I'm warm and my form locked in, I'm not tugging on it or being jer herky jerky like a football bench, but I am uh, putting everything I can into the bar and that, um, fires more muscles, kind of helps the speed, kind of helps explosion. So that's the, the majority of my training, the majority of the training in Kaizen um, that we program for you guys. Uh, it is all based around submaximal, more higher volume, higher frequency, a little bit more specific training. There are variations thrown in. You know, I'll do a tempo squat, I'll do a pause squat, I'll do a block pull, I'll do a deficit pull. I'll even use some bands and chains here and there. Uh, but the majority of it is specific movements um, done to accumulate volume over time, done to get better at the lift and become faster, 
more explosive. This isn't bad. If there was a silent mic powerlifting federation, what would be involved? Monolift sleeves, wraps, tested, non-tested. Um, I'm gonna ignore the tested or non-tested. There's already kind of uh, those branches, so um, who really cares? You know where to go for each. Um, I'm a big fan of a power bar to squat and bench with. Um, and I'm a big fan to deadlift with a deadlift bar. So besides that, I don't really care. I don't mind walking out my weights. Uh, I like the idea of a monolift just because I like how it adjusts, but uh, obviously the kind of uh, ER racks or whatever are very easy to comp. The comp uh, racks are easy to adjust as well, but I think some kind of hydraulic monolift is very cool. Moving the, the things in and out is really cool. So let's do monolift walkout. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Uh, power bar to squat with obviously there's no big boys in my federation because those poor guys can't use that bar very well uh, Even though Ray Williams smashes with it. So no excuse to you other big boys um, I like the bench. Uh, I'd say feet up. You could feet up with your bench You just can't move those feet around uh, and then I'd say a deadlift bar because those are a few of my favorite things ladies and gentlemen That's it for this one before be sure to follow me, Silent Mike with two Ks on Instagram, also Twitter. I got a Facebook, all the links are below if you want my programming. I appreciate you guys. Give this thing a thumbs up, share it with your friends. We're out of here until next time.